Hi, welcome to Physionic, where we learn the body from the macro to the micro. If that's something you think you'd be interested in, then consider subscribing. In this piece, we will be diving into how autophagy is used by our cells to defend against viruses. Learn Your Body, a science-based education. This unbelievably fascinating mechanism is brought to us by a short review in the scientific journal Cell and Developmental Biology. You can find the review as well as my notes and my amendments that may follow this publishing linked to this content for you. With that said, how does autophagy allow our cells to fight off viruses? When we think immunity, we typically consider immune cells like T cells, macrophages, and neutrophils, and others to be central to our immune system, and they are. However, all cells capable of autophagy use this system to implement a type of intracellular immunity, or within the cell immunity broadening our immunity from the limited view of immunity being an immune cell only classification. Autophagy is often considered a cellular cleanup machinery, but evidence keeps growing that it does much more than that. In immunity, it can attack invading viruses directly. It does so by undergoing its classic autophagy mechanisms, meaning it begins by forming a piece of a vesicle with key autophagy proteins like Becklin on the outside and LC3 on the inside. Then it forms a phagophore, meaning the LC3 protein found inside the autophagic vesicle is bound by the key proteins like P62 and Smurf, which in turn are attached by ubiquitinated viral proteins. To simplify, the viral proteins invading the cell are often tagged by molecules known as ubiquitin, and once tagged, they are attached to the forming autophagy vesicle. Next, the vesicle elongates and closes, trapping the viral proteins in the now called autophagosome. Here, there are two primary fates. If the vesicle is bound by a lysosome, a destructive vesicle, it fuses, forming the deadly autolysosome, a virus's worst nightmare. The autolysosome increases the acidity within the vesicle, as well as introduces a host of enzymes that destroy proteins. Essentially, trapped, isolated, and facing an army of destructive enzymes, the viral proteins are destroyed. However, some proteins are then given to extracellular major histocompatibility complexes, MHC for short, which bind these viral proteins and use them as antigens to present outside the cell, a bit like offering to a bloodhound to sniff out. Now, the immune cells collect these antigens and use them to form antibodies against further viruses. So this is autophagy mediated. However, if a lysosome does not bind the autophagosome, this non-acidic vesicle can within it have toll-like receptors, TLRs, which this is more often referred as an endosome instead of an autophagosome. In this case, these toll-like receptors bind viral DNA and RNA, promoting a cascade of events that lead to the expression of genes within the cell that encode cytokines, or messenger proteins, to recruit immune cells to the cell. These pro-inflammatory cytokines are also increased by damaged mitochondria, which increase their reactive oxygen species, leading to activation of reactive oxygen species sensitive proteins that also excite inflammatory cytokine genes. However, since the viral assaulted cell does not want to overdo it with the cytokine release, thereby recruiting more and more intense immune reaction, it will destroy damaged mitochondria via autophagy, known as mitophagy. Not only that, some of the autophagy-related proteins like Becklin and ATG9 will bind other signaling complexes that would otherwise translocate, that's to say, move to the nucleus and further the pro-inflammatory signaling. When Becklin and other autophagy-associated proteins bind these signaling complexes, like Sting, they inhibit the ability to affect the genes, reducing inflammatory signaling. So, in all of these ways, autophagy regulates the intracellular, again, within the cell, 
immunity by making sure it responds, but not too dramatically as it systematically and coldly annihilates the virus entering the cell. Finally, there is also evidence that autophagy in one cell due to a viral intrusion can lead to signaling molecules being sent from the afflicted cell to unafflicted cells, known as paracrine action, and warn them to begin producing a powerful phagus army to meet any viral invaders before they enter the cell, much to the virus's surprise, if it could emote, I'm sure. This is one of the most mind-blowingly cool phenomenon our cells implement to defend themselves, and by extension, you, from all viral attacks. Autophagy not only acts as a cleanup service, but double dips as the army corps as well. With that said, I hope this proved informative, and I hope I have the pleasure of speaking with you in the next one. Cheers.